Welcome back to Paul's Tech News. As you can clearly see from this graphic my editor made, we have crossed the event horizon and are plunging headlong into the end of the year hardware launch bonanza, wherein we are expecting substantive new products to come to market from all three of the major CPU and GPU players, AMD, Nvidia, and Intel. So you know what time it is? It's time to check the big board, where we can see confirmed time windows, announcements, and launch dates for all three. Let's start with AMD Ryzen 7000 CPUs and the AM5 platform, which got off to an early start with an announcement on August 29th and a launch date scheduled for September 27th. Next, we have the AMD Radeon 7000 series GPUs, which are still expected by the end of the year, but we don't have a launch date or even an expected announcement date yet. For Team Green, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 40 series GPUs have been rumored for quite some time, and Jensen has indicated a 2022 launch, but we only now have a potential announcement date of September 20th, since Nvidia has just started to promote a GeForce Beyond broadcast that day. For Intel, we have the 13th gen Raptor Lake CPUs, still expected before the year is out, but with no official dates yet, although leaks abound. And finally, the oft-delayed Intel Arc Alchemist GPUs, the good ones theoretically, aka the A500 and A700 SKUs, are still seemingly launching soon, but skepticism is warranted based on their track record thus far. I think this is the most actual news that I've ever crammed into an intro though, but don't worry, there's lots still to come. Welcome to this week's episode of Tech News. Excellent! Today's video is brought to you by the new Height Eclipse HG10 wireless gaming headset, combining a clean matte lunar gray color scheme with competition grade functionality, including 2.4 gigahertz wireless connectivity with 30 hour estimated battery life, high fidelity 40 millimeter neodymium drivers, a detachable unidirectional mic, USB type C connectivity with an included 1.8 meter cable to play and charge at the same time, and conveniently accessible controls for power, volume, and mute. For more on the Height Eclipse HG10 headset, click the sponsor link in the video description. All right, there is so much to talk about today, so I will be plowing ahead with Reckless Abandon, kind of like I do with your mom. And the lead story isn't any big launch from Big Red, Big Blue, or Big Green. It's the Ethereum merge, the transition to proof of stake, and the death knell for GPU mining of Ethereum, traditionally speaking, as it will almost certainly take place this week, between the 13th and the 16th of September, now that the Bellatrix upgrade has been activated. The date might shift based on network hash rates, but most are estimating the 15th to be the day it will actually happen. Once merged, the difficulty level on Ethereum's proof-of-work network will increase to the point where mining new blocks will no longer be possible, causing all GPU mining advocates who have been telling me for months that the merge will never happen to fall back to plan B, which is to switch their mining operations to a different proof-of-work coin that's GPU mineable, while desperately hoping that the price pumps, the difficulty doesn't skyrocket, and the market cap magically balloons, making it profitable enough to outpace their electricity bill. I'll be honest, I'm skeptical that that cryptocurrency actually exists. Perhaps a better bet would be to sell off those mining GPUs, a trend that is gaining momentum based on used GPU pricing and something that is bringing all manner of cards to the secondary market, including models that were never actually released, like the 20 gigabyte variant of the RTX 3080, which Twitter user Hongjing2020 is selling about 100 units of. They're MSI cards apparently, and they look to be legit based on the pictures, although it's anybody's guess as to whether or not they'd actually work for gaming with up to date Nvidia drivers. The price is between $432 and $576 per RMB conversion, and it's pretty clear that these are leftover cards from a mining operation. And I don't know about you, but this makes me wonder if Nvidia had a 20 gigabyte variant of the RTX 3080 planned to the extent that MSI manufactured a first run before that SKU was cancelled, well that makes some sense. Poor MSI was then left with a stack of RTX 3080s that they couldn't sell at retail. Yada yada yada, a GPU miner now has a bunch of MSI 20 gigabyte RTX 3080 GPUs that they are selling. You can fill in the blanks yourself, I'm sure. And what better way to celebrate the Ethereum merge and the glut of used GPUs being sold off than to launch brand new cards into these most ideal of market conditions. I doubt this was Nvidia's plan originally, but the timeline seems to be lining up in a way that elicits not an insignificant amount of schadenfreude from those of us who have been tracking the GPU situation for the past couple years. As they have done in the past, Nvidia's GeForce Twitter feed started to tease something called Project Beyond on Wednesday, with a follow-up Thursday 
Wednesday that contained a virtually uncrackable secret message that was of course cracked within about 30 minutes by Twitter user RedSunFX. Just count the triangles and you'll also be privy to NVIDIA's highly classified message. Be sure to drink your Ovaltine. Wait, scratch that. It says GeForce Beyond 2009. 22, indicating that a special GeForce presentation will take place at GTC, NVIDIA's graphics technology conference that is typically light on content or reveals for consumer gaming GPUs, but by all indications will be getting an NVIDIA 40 series GPU announcement on September 20th at 8 a.m. Pacific time. So of course, RTX 40 series rumors are going into overdrive mode with the Vietnamese retailer KCC shop apparently disclosing three RTX 4090 models from Gigabyte that they have on order, and the Chip Hell forums posting 3D Mark scores that also seem to come from an RTX 4090. If true, the model tested hit temps of only around 55 to 60 degrees Celsius while running at over 3 gigahertz and scoring 20,192 points in the graphics test, about a 90% improvement over the RTX 3090, and it was only paired with an i5-12400F, so more headroom could be available still. I did note that these leaks appear to all be RTX 4090s though, leaving a question as to if we'll see just that SKU launch this year, or if we'll be seeing the also rumored RTX 4080 and 4070 come to market as well. But a heads up to you leakers out there, Nvidia is staying one step ahead of you with the newest release of GPU-Z, which will now block uploads to the Tech Power Up database when an Nvidia engineering sample GPU is used. Don't worry Nvidia, your secrets will be safe now, as long as those dirty leakers don't develop screenshot technology. Speaking of dirty leaks, I almost crapped my pants when I saw MSI's listings for their new X670E motherboards for the AM5 platform. That's X670 Extreme, which is way more hardcore than regular X670, hence the prices, which get as high as $1,300 dollars for a motherboard. That's more than most mid-range systems cost just a couple years ago, so what could they possibly be including to justify that price? Okay, we got an M.2 expansion card, built-in 10 gigabit ethernet, uh, their best power delivery and cooling, presumably, and aha, an M-Vision dashboard, a 4.5 inch touchscreen IPS LCD panel, which is Kinda cool, I guess. But not worth 1300 bucks, IMO. The cheapest board they list is the Pro X670-P Wi-Fi, which is still a pricey 290 bucks, but it's not even extreme. Lame. I guess this does show us what the E in X670E actually stands for, though. Extremely expensive. Intel would like to remind us once again that they have ARC GPUs in the works, and not just the crappy A380, but actually better cards from the A500 and A700 lineup. And now we have some indication that a launch might be imminent, although a date has not yet been shared. They are bundling $370 worth of games and apps with PCs that ship with 12th gen CPUs and ARC GPUs. Three full games, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed, and Gotham Knights, as well as some DLC for Vampire the Masquerade Blood Hunt, and a handful of productivity apps are included, and one might assume that if these bundles are available for PCs that feature this hardware listed here, then those PCs themselves might be available for purchase soon too. But Intel still won't give us a freaking launch date, although they're happy to have Tom and Ryan host yet another video that trickles out another handful of ARC GPU specs. Here's the chart with all the SKUs, and a lot of this information has been presented before, and another with some details on the A750 and the A770. I think they might have upgraded their set too, it's uh, looking pretty fancy. Lots of yellow and purple in there. On the Intel CPU side though, we also don't have official updates on launch dates or anything, but Igor of Igor's Lab did post a big ol' set of slides Thursday that appear to be Intel's Raptor Lake press deck. It's a lot to cover, so check the article if you want to dig in, but we appear to have confirmation of previously rumored things, like a 24-core 32-thread 13900K, a DDR5 upgrade to 5600 speed, thermal velocity boost speeds of up to 5.8 gigahertz, and a launch list of SKUs, including the K and KF models of the 14-core 13600, the 16-core 13700, and the 24-core 13900. But still, no embargo or launch dates to be found. I hope these are made public soon so I can update my big board. 
And now it's time for tech briefs, which are so quick this week, I don't even have time to introduce them. Savvy PC builders who watch my monthly builds and deals series know that there are some serious SSD deals out there right now, but prices could drop even more if this news is true. Analyst firm Trendforce tells us that the NAND flash market did not experience its usual peak season sales surge, so they have lots of extra NAND on hand, made of sand. It would be grand if this unplanned lack of demand causes brands to expand their sales or to reduce prices, which is often the economic result of oversupply. Sorry, I ran out of words that rhyme with NAND. You understand. Moving on to some really dumb news, maker of pretty nice TVs and displays LG has decided to jump into the NFT game because they apparently can't read the room and don't grasp that most people hate NFTs as indicated by the drastic drop off in transactions on sites like OpenSea since they peaked back in May. LG TVs that update to or ship with WebOS 5.0 or later will now have access to the LG Art Lab platform, which is an NFT sales portal, allowing me to add yet another entry to my list of reasons why smart TVs suck. It's bad enough that they track you, have security holes, integrate ads without permission, and have UIs that make your eyes bleed. Now they'll try to sell you NFTs too. Don't get a smart TV, or if you do, just never connect it to the internet. Apple had an event this week where they announced some iPhones or something, but what caught my eye was a comment from Tim Cook in the aftermath when he was asked about improving texting capabilities with non-Apple devices. I don't hear our users asking that we put a lot of energy into that, he said, and when the questioner pointed out that he couldn't send certain videos to his Android using mother, Cook said, buy your mom an iPhone. And apparently this is mainly a problem in the US, but it's frustrating when a company could easily fix an issue by adopting RCS texting, but refuses to because it helps stigmatize their competitors. I always say that people should use the hardware that works for them, and that includes Apple products, but I have another list of reasons why I do not use Apple devices personally, and it looks like I have yet another entry to add to that list too. Lastly, because I like science, here's some science news. The Korea Superconducting Tokamek, which I'm probably mispronouncing, Advanced Research Experience, located at the Korea Institute for Fusion Energy in Seoul, South Korea, successfully initiated a nuclear fusion reaction that lasted for 30 seconds at temperatures in excess of 100 million degrees Celsius on Wednesday. The temperature and length of time aren't records for nuclear fusion, but doing both at the same time is unprecedented and a significant step towards the creation of a viable fusion reactor. And considering the rumors about GPU power draw for these next-gen cards, figuring out an unlimited and sustainable source of energy would be a timely achievement right about now. At least we hope that the NVIDIA 40 series runs slightly cooler than 100 million degrees Celsius. Probably. But I'm all tapped out, so there you have it guys, tech news for the week, and if you liked it, click that like button or leave me a comment down below about how excited and or jaded you might be about these upcoming hardware launches. While you're down there, all the articles I talked about today are linked in the description if you're interested. You can also check out my store at paulshardware.net for high quality merchandise, t-shirts, hoodies, beer sets, and more, including my excellent new 8-bit designs. Subscribing to my channel is always a good call too. Thanks again everyone, and we'll see you next week.